everybody today i'm gonna uh, do part two of the cce duct cce stands for counter current exchange one of the thoughts i had about part cooling is that what we generally do is we have a, a multi-directional stream or we have two colliding streams that basically intersect at the um, nozzle and what i'm imagining is happening is a lot of turbulence and a lot of basically wasted air potential if you will so old school cooling is i started out with just this little duct so this is what uh, was providing decent cooling um, using my uh, cpap machine or a blower and so that was gen one if you will and then as i got the um, chc hot end with a lot smaller uh, ceramic heater i had the opportunity to start looking at potentially routing the air around this seems like the most logical part where you have two nozzles splitting out um, but the, the difference here is one key thought that i thought i i would share with the, you guys is that the two streams shouldn't have a head-on collision air streams uh, think of it more instead of a, a head-on collision slightly angled towards the uh, part and the nozzle, I wanted the two airstreams to actually miss each other. So this countercurrent exchange, it's a common biological phenomenon. You can study it in fish and weather systems and you name it. So this is my latest design inspired uh, by that idea of actually cooling uh, almost like a wind shear so I have a airstream coming out on one side and the other side uh, they they do not intersect each other there's obviously some losses when they when they do come into contact and there's micro turbulence or swirling going on at the boundary condition but it's a gradual uh, phenomenon it's installed like this but I shoot with my camera this way so I wanted to have the um, part of the nozzle visible. So that's why I chose to have this one shorter and that one longer, even though logically it would be the other way around. So a couple of things that uh, I found to be a small issue is that this is easily, easily pivots. Initially, I was going to pin it with a little nail, but I decided against that. And in fact, I just made a little spring, basically, uh, to... Uh, to lock everything in place and i did glue on a little bit of a of some filament here just to have a little bit more of an interference so this this was my gen one and it works this block has multiple purposes also but we'll talk about that later right now i wanted to uh, go through some of the ducts so i'm replacing this duct some of the earlier ones i already showed they were more symmetric and uh, they were this one was glued together uh, the earliest were just a one-piece duct like this they work fairly well but i wanted to have a little bit more direction so a lot of air ended up going straight down i wanted to uh, uh, really go into this type of arrangement that was an early trying to go for ultra symmetry and they, they work well enough but as i went through i really settled on this design and that seems to be quite uh good as you can see here i am splitting my airstream um so that it's not doesn't matter too much what my duct looks like at that point but uh let's look at this print so i have the abs part the prints like this on the bed i did touch it with the sandpaper a little bit uh, just a 200 grit or so on the table i'm not going to do that on camera but i wanted to show you how i glue this obviously i didn't model any um any alignment features or anything i wanted to to be as simple as possible you can see my little bridge here uh, that uh, splits the airstream into two and uh, so the way i glue this is i use a piece of tape kind of like what woodworkers do and we just tape this together like that and form a hinge so we can open it 
easily it's already aligned perfectly and then we can apply the super glue and just glue this together so when this lid is open let's open the super glue and just apply this uh, when you're super gluing ABS or any plastic less is more so let's see if I got enough here I may need to actually help this a little bit so, oh. this is why I do this over a, a plastic bag so <laughs> let's go less is more right so that's what I do just apply a tiny bead of glue all the way around it's, it's nice on the sanded surface it's very clear where you wet it with super glue and where you don't I'm sorry if you have uh, the washing machines on doing crazy things so that's it and then the alignment is pretty much guaranteed all I have to do is close this together and the amazing thing with ABS is that it's instant bond so I can print almost immediately with this so I can use the tape to kind of lock this down um, wipe away the, any excess um, hold it for a few seconds and my CCE duct is ready CCE again stands for counter current exchange it's not really bonding there I need to press and hold for a few seconds make sure it, it has a good uh, bond you can use an accelerant I've seen it discolor the plastic not really ideal sometimes but again it's not so much about the looks I do like the transitions this is a nice little radius here a blend I don't know if you can capture that on camera it prints extremely well oh the new feature here is I changed the I changed the receiver here to be more of a drop shape so that it keys the duct and there is a little bit of a wiggle here I can tighten this up a little bit in the future as well but it uh, it's less likely to move around so the part is held on really well the air comes in here splits and cools so if you can imagine the nozzle the printer nozzle being something like this here that uh, you have a shear a wind shear happening once air stream goes on this side of the nozzle the other stream comes around and there's some swirl turbulence happening but not the turbulence that you expect when two streams collide with each other and so in fact the uh, uh, benefit is that the airstream while it's there are some parasitic losses here <laughs> you are exchanging thermal properties and you're you're inducing swirl and turbulence at the boundary of the two streams the stream does continue and and provide cooling to the whole part so if you're printing a speed bench or whatnot this helps you to cool not just directly at the nozzle but also around the part so you can get really good cooling that way so the cool thing is this is easy on easy off you can switch out any type of duct you want so you can clearly see I've been experimenting some of these older ones are loose so I would actually shim it up with tape or just use a nail um, this design is already fairly good it's holding well so any kind of maintenance duct comes off goes back on you're ready to print so sometimes I just leave it off entirely if I want to have a clear view of the nozzle cooling is not always critical this is not the prettiest glue job but again I'm not a artist so sorry about that and uh, this is my finished duct ready to print if, if I was really picky I'd maybe fill this in with some uh, 
UV glue. Actually, let me see if I can do that on camera. So one thing I really like is this adhesive. Yeah, I'm not getting paid to say anything good or bad about this. Bought this with my own money, so chill out. I'm not selling this stuff to you. Um, but basically, if you have a gap and you want it filled, this is amazing that you can quickly and easily do that. So my part is ready. I like the shine, the gloss that it gives you. Uh, so you can fill in gaps with this beautiful material. And the amazing thing is in the age of everything being instant, this is the ultimate. So that, that little gap that I had here is now filled. And uh, yeah, I can make it prettier. This is just, you need a few seconds of this. So the adhesive, it's smooth to touch, shiny, perfect. So, and that's my duct. I just touched it up with some I don't even know how to pronounce this word, so I'm not going to try. But this is one of my favorite adhesives. Um, besides super glue, it's my second go-to adhesive for applications that uh, are suitable for it. I just put that into a drop of glue. Ugh. Okay, that was super glue. I do have a little bit of a, a spring feature here. The detent feature I already mentioned, and the duct is keyed and ready to go. So I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so now let's install the new duct. So we have the the adapter tube, tube adapter, if you will. We have the duct, and uh, let's uh, switch this over. So first we take off our little wire clips uh, and uh, I'm not going to remove anything from the tool except slide this off. Uh, that looks on camera. I did break the green duct off so there was a collision, I did something stupid. But I'll, I'll replace this completely with uh, this. I do have a tube for uh, hot end cooling, a tube for part cooling, and a channel for my wires. Also, this feature here, it's not just a diffuser, distributor for air, for the radiator, but it also is a clip, so I'm securing the tool head with this instead of fasteners, so kind of like an old school um, woodworking project. Uh, so that goes on to this rail, slides down, everything is in, and then the tubes go in this way, and then I'll tie them together here. There's probably a more elegant solution than this. And then the final step is take the cooling duct, key it in. I'm going to push the tube out a little bit, and that's it. My cooling system is in and ready to go. Super easy. And uh, again, to pull it out, slide this out, it's ready. And I've had tons of prints with this system already. You can see, uh, besides the fish, I've printed these guys. That's a lot of cooling, a lot of retraction and printing and uh, they're all doing quite well. I love these little coasters. They're addicting to print. You can see how you can do uh, color swaps on eye decks like this. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the, it holds up well. It's easy to remove, easy to service. The tool is actually quite awesome because what I can do is I can pop the tool out, off effortlessly for, for service. So I absolutely love how easy it is to pull things apart on this. Um, obviously you never want to do maintenance on, on uh, your printer. It's the last thing you want to do, but uh, when you have to, 
this comes apart so effortlessly uh, so align the bearings snap it in slide the belt over and snap on this belt and the tool is back ready to go so tool swaps are just a breeze and i love it it might have been wind shear over